So in the posterior view of the thorax, the left and right line are visible and the cleft also is visible. We find that the cleft is a larger sort around each line. So is the cleft. We are able to show you a, a space that we can call close to the diaphragmatic recess. Another reflection, when the flares, what is the problem? The uh, break finish. Uh, you think uh, and look. Uh, <coughs> the break finish. If you imagine the right line and the left line. Right line and left line, if you notice, the flare is going to cover each of them separately. The flare is going to cover the lateral surface reflected to cover the mediastinal surface. In an anterior border of each line, make another recess. We call the coastal mediastinal anterior recess. Again, this coastal layer is going to reflect to cover the mediastinal surface in posterior. Again, in posterior border, we are able to find the posterior coastal mediastinal recess. So around each line, we have three recess. The antro coastal mediastinal recess, the coastal coastal mediastinal, and the coastal diaphragmatic recess. The coastal diaphragmatic recess is visible here. It is the largest recess that we can call the coastal diaphragmatic sinus. Again, look at this picture. The anterior coastal mediastinal recess is visible here. Which of them, the anterior coastal mediastinal recess, is larger bigger? In the right side or in the left side? Look at the picture. The left side, yes, so because you have cardiac notch, so this space is larger than the right side. Means the anterior coastal mediastinal recess in the left side is larger than the right, right side. side. And the coastal diaphragmatic recess that we can call coastal diaphragmatic sinus are visible in both sides, left side and right side. In this schematic picture, the right line and left line are visible. How we can distinguish if this right line and another one is left line? You can compare the anterior border. In anterior border of left line, you can find cardiac notch. The right line is larger than and heavier than the left line. In the right line, I am able to show you two deep fissures. Oblique fissure and horizontal fissure. How many lobes are visible in right line? Three. Three. Superior, medium, medium inferior lobe. In the left line, only one oblique fissure is visible. So at the first, I am able to show you two lobes. Superior lobe and inferior lobe. If you notice in the anterior border of the left line, this process that belongs to the superior lobe of the left line, exactly inferior to cardiac notch, this part we call lingula. So lingula here is the same as the middle lobe in the right line means the right line consists of superior lobe, middle lobe, inferior lobe. The left line consists of superior lobe, lingula, and inferior lobe. Which area, which lobe in left line is the same in middle lobe in right line? The lingula. Lingula is the small portion of superior lobe in left line exactly inferior to cardiac notch. Do you get that? Yes. So the lingula is... Lingula it's is... It's a part, not the line. You, ulo, ulo, come here. Sit, yes, come and sit in the ante. Here, the next line. 
So, please remember, cardiac notch, here is the lingula. Lingula is the same in the right lobe that we call the middle lobe. In the middle lobe, we don't have middle lobe. In the left line, we don't have middle lobe. Instead, I am able to show you the lingula. So, the right line, the left line. I told you an anterior border is different. The right line consists of two deep fissures, oblique fissures and horizontal fissures. So in the right line we have three lobes, superior lobe, middle lobe, inferior lobe. But in the left line we are not able to show you horizontal fissure. Only oblique fissure is visible. Oblique fissure is going to divide the left lobe the superior lobe and inferior lobe. Exactly, the inferior to the cardiac notch is superior lobe of the left line. This part, this area we call the lingula. Lingula is such as the middle lobe in the right line. Now look at here, superior lobe, middle lobe, inferior lobe, superior lobe, lingula, Inferior lobe, this blue line is going to remember you the flare. Here is the coastal diaphragmatic recess or coastal diaphragmatic sinus. Here is the anterior coastal mediastinal recess, anterior coastal mediastinal recess in the left side, anterior coastal mediastinal space or recess in the left side is larger than the right side. And here, it is going to remember you, again, the position of the anterior border of the right line and left line. Look at to this cardiac notch of the line, and this notch in the anterior border of the left flat. Now, here, yes. we are going to explain <coughs> for you another item. What do you think? In this slide, you are going to look yeah. at the biggest Just I have a question. Huh? I have a question. Okay. Uh, when someone has an accident, can I uh, remove uh, one of his loops? Yes. Sometimes, for example, a cancer, which is possible at the end in one lobe. Okay? Each lobe is going to divide a small portion that we call segment. It is possible you remove one segment. It is possible you will be able to remove and you force to remove one load. It is possible you force to remove one lung. Okay, you are going to help the patient to increase the survival. Okay? It's all lungs, just all lungs. Lung. Yes. I told you one segment, one mm -hmm. load, one lung. It's possible. Will he able to uh, breathe normally? Like the Yes, look at me, you never uh, going to do the surgery. When you are going to do the surgery, you are going to help to the patient to increase the survival. So sometimes you force to do the surgery. Yes, some problem is going to make for the patient. But instead you are going to decrease the survival. Without the surgery, it's possible this uh, patient get die very many. Now, in this picture, you are going to look at the subdivision of the bronchus. Main bronchus is going to divide to divide. At the end, it is going to form the alveole. Around each alveole, that in the histology, you are going to read. Each alveole consists of one layer, one thin layer. And around each alveole, you can find the capillary, the vein capillary and the artery capillary. Because the capillary consists of one layer, the alveole consists of one layer, so the exchange of the oxygen and CO2 is going to happen here very fast, very easily. Because all of them consist of one layer. And you should know in the histology, we are going to explain for you that each bronchus is going to divide, to divide, to make the bronchial, bronchial. <coughs> At the first, we call terminal bronchial. Each terminal bronchial divide to make respiratory bronchial. 
When the bronchiole becomes one millimeter in diameter, the cartilage disappears and the smooth muscles are going to appear. When the cartilage disappears, when the lumen of the bronchiole becomes less than one millimeter. Okay? Now, here, you are going to look at the both of the line to the coastal surface. Please notice the coastal surface. The moulage of the ribs are visible here. These surfaces of both lines are near to the ribs. So the effect of the ribs are visible here. We get that? Mm -hmm. Now I rotate. Here is the coastal surface and here is the mediastinal surface. In mediastinal surface of each line, I am able to show you the halo. In medial surface of each line, we are able to show you the halo. Inside of the halo, some of the structure are going in and some of the structure are leaving the the line, okay? Now, here we have the left and right line. What's the name of this surface? Mediastinal. Mediastinal surface. Where is the heart? In the between. So the heart, we know two-thirds of the heart is left. in the left side. So the cardiac infection in the medial, in the medial snort surface of left line is more contrived compared to the cardiac infection of the medial snort surface in right line. Now here, you are going to look at to which line, right line or left line? Right line. How do you get? Three line. Because there's no three line. Two deep fissures. And also in anterior border, you are not able to find the cardiac notch. Yes? So it is the right line. And if you notice, here is a halo. Inside of the halo, anterior to posterior. It is anterior border, posterior border. And here is the inferior border. Inferior border is visible around the base or diaphragmatic surface of each line. Here is the cardiac impression. It is right line, cardiac impression. Exactly, superior to the genome. Here, I am able to show you a arc, a arc impression, yes? A arc notch. How do you think? Which vein do you, in your opinion, which vein? No, it's going to make these which vein is going to drain to the superior vein I No, a zygous vein. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A zygous vein mm -hmm. is going to have and make this impression exactly superior to the right helon you can find an arcuate arc surplus. This surplus belongs to a zygous vein. Here we have a vertical groove, vertical groove or surplus. Here is going to have relation with inferior vena cava. Here is going to have relation with superior vena cava. And here with the right brachiocephalus. Now, here, we can do the left line in this picture. How do we get with this left line? Just One two. tissue and this cardiac notch. What's the name of this part? Uh, the Labula, mediastinal surface, anterior border, posterior border. Helon is visible here. Cardiac impression, it is more concave to the Previous slide, cardiac impression of previous slide. Why? Right. Because the heart the is, is, in is in the left side. Superior to the helium of the left line, again, I am able to show you a sulcus, an output, arcuate sulcus. What do you think? Arch of the aorta. Arch of the aorta. 
So for the left line, superior to the helium, these arcuate circles belong to arc of the aorta. In the right side, these belong to the azygous vein. In the right and the one line, affected for the superior vena cava. Superior vena cava is here, and the right rectocephalic right is here. Now, in the left line, here is the arc of the aorta, and this vertical surplus belong to descending thoracic aorta. This surplus and anterior to the thoracic aorta in the left line belong to the esophagus. Esophagus descending or thoracic aorta, arc of the aorta. Helon, again in the left line. Look at the left line. In failure structure, and failure structure in the left line, what's the name of this blue? Well, not the artery. Well, not the artery. Here, this blue are going to remember you again, pulmonary vein. So in the helo of the right line and the helo of the left line, you are able to find the blue, the vein, the pulmonary vein, and the and pulmonary vein. But you told us that the pulmonary yes, vein yes. In is some of, In most of the atlas, in most of the atlas, the vein here are going to show you by the red color. But here is normally, in all of the atlas, the veins are going to show you by the blue and the artery. But, but here, in some of the atlas is possible, they show you inverse. Um, now we can here. Can we remember then that the pulmonary vein is inferior to the pulmonary artery? Two, in, in the helome of mm. the both line, mm. we have two pulmonary veins. In each side, pulmonary veins are going to Superior to, right to the left atrium, okay? Two in the left, two in the right side. Now here, these two. One of them is anterior structure and one of them is inferior structure. It was one of the questions for the last semester. Content of the left and right helium. Which of the following items is going to define anteriorly and inferiorly in both helium? Posterior pulmonary vein, pulmonary artery. And posterior pulmonary artery, I am able to show you bronchus. Okay? Okay. Now from superior. Do you get that? Which item is posterior position? Bronchus. Which item is anterior? Vein. Which item is between these two? Artery. Artery. In dissection room. In the left line, from superior to inferior, you should remember that superior we have the artery, inferior to the artery, the bronchus, inferior to the bronchus, the <coughs> vein. Okay? Now look at to the another item in this picture. It is going to show you the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura. The parietal pleura never enter to this tissue, but the visceral pleura are visible here. So each of the lobes are going to cover by the visceral pleura, but the parietal pleura are not going to divide all of the lobes from each other because they are not going to be fine inside of this tissue. In this picture, it is a good Item, it is going to remember you the medial synapse surface of the right and the left line. If you notice the left and right line, if you notice in the left and right line, superior to the below, we have the arcuate surface. In the left line, belong to the arc of the old heart here, belong to the arc of the side. Posterior to the below, in the left line, we have two vertical surplus. This vertical surplus belong to thoracic aorta and this belong to the esophagus. And here, you should remember the vena cava inferior, vena cava superior, and brachiocephalic in its right side. Now, notice inferior to the helome, this blue ligament. In failure to the genome, this blue ligament, 
is going to make for you the pulmonary ligament. So in your exam, if I ask you pulmonary ligament is going to be fine in which of the following I can remember inferior to the helium in the right side and left side. This ligament we call the pulmonary ligament. And these two ligaments belong to the Harriet Fulmula. Harriet Fulmula inferior to the helium are going to form for us the pulmonary ligament. This sleeve like of the flag around the content of the helium are visible in both sides. This, which line? Left, left, right. uh, left. Left. What's the name of this part? Lego. Lego. Now, we catch you this picture. Which way does not surface? Uh, left. Left. Arch left. of the order. Arch of the order. Which medias not surface? Right. 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 Again, the got the castle in this picture, the elbow struggles are boss. given here. Sim. So, in the right side, again, this vertical belongs to the esophagus. This vertical also in left side belongs to the esophagus. Look at here. What's the name of this ligament? Here and uh, here. Uh, uh, the vena cava inferior, vena cava superior, right brachial. Separate. And here belong to the subclavian R. Now, hmm? the sympathetic and parasympathetic are going to control the lungs and the visceral pleura. And uh, you should know this picture about your question. You ask me that if we want to remove a small portion of the mm -hmm. lobe. Look at the superior lobe, middle lobe, inferior lobe. Each lobe <coughs> consists of a small portion, a small segment. Mm -hmm. Superior lobe consists of three segments. Apical segment, anterior segment, <coughs> posterior, posterior segment. Very easily, you are able to remove a, a small segment, okay? The middle lobe in the right lobe, in the right line, consists of two segments. Medial, medial segment, segment lateral, lateral segment. Lateral segment. The inferior lobe in the right line Superior. consists of okay. five segments. Four, Four segments are visible here, apical, Anterior inferior segment, Anterior. lateral inferior segment, posterior Medial. inferior segment, and here this red segment is medial inferior segment. So five segments, four are visible here, and the red one in the middle of side. This segmentation is going to help you that we are able to remove each of the segment. Now the answer to this question. The right line consists of how many segments? The right line? Ten. 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 Three Ten. in the apical, two in the middle, and five in the inferior lobe. What about the left line? About the left line, eight. some Seven. text Seven. right for you it is considered. This consists of eight. Some of them Seven. believe that consists of nine lobes. What happened that in the superior lobe we have two segments in the left line? The apical and posterior lobe connect to each other, things to each other. In the right line we have three lobes, apical, posterior, anterior. In the left line we have anterior and the apico-posterior lobe. Okay, apical posterior lobe means the apical and posterior lobe fuse to each other and make one segment. Again, it is the superior lobe of the right line consists of three segments: apical segment, anterior segment, posterior segment. Some of, in some of the texts, explain for you that the superior lobe in the left line consists of two segments. 
the anterior lobe, such as the anterior lobe in the right line. But the apical and the posterior fuse to each other and make one lobe. So we can call apico posterior segment. Okay? How many segments decrease? One. One. <coughs> it is the middle lobe. Medial and lateral no, segment. Here is the lingular no. lobe. Superior and inferior. Okay? okay? The second part is And the inferior lobe in the right and left sometimes in most of them consists of five segments. Now here, it is going to remember you that in which part of the thorax you are able to hear with the stethoscope the sounds of the lobe. If you want to hear the apical or the superior lobe, you should put the stethoscope here. If you want to hear the inferior lobe, you should put the stethoscope here. If you want to hear the superior lobe also, again, you should put the stethoscope here. Now, this picture is going to remember you in your book. Which lung is visible here? Right. What's the name of this tissue? Aubrey. What's the name of this tissue? In your book, in the Grace Anatomy, in the Esther Anatomy, they are going to explain for you that the horizontal or transverse tissue is going to continue in the direction of the four ribs. If you raise your hand, if you find the four ribs in surface anatomy, we can imagine that in mid axillary, if you go and continue the four ribs, it is going to show you the direction of the horizontal tissue in the right lobe. Okay? What about the oblique? Tissue. The sixth rib is going to remember you. The, the direction of the sixth rib is going to remember you the position and the direction of the opening tissue. Okay? The sixth rib, please remember the opening tissue. The fourth rib, remember the horizontal tissue. And the last thing here. Look at this picture. It was one of the questions for the last semester. It is mid-clavicular line, mid-axillary line, and scapular line. In mid-clavicular line, if in surface anatomy, I want to show you the inferior border of the rib, uh, the line, and the inferior border of the flare, in mid-clavicular, Please remember about the inferior border of the line, the six ribs. Two ribs come down. What about the shadow of the flare in the clavicular? Which rib helps you do? A. Go to the mid axillary. The inferior border of the line is eight ribs. What about the flare? Posteriorly, posteriorly, the inferior of the line is 10. And what about the left? 10 rib about the left, 2 rib comes down. This is the card. 2 plus 10? 12. 12. So please remember, mid-clavicular about the line, six rib about the cleft, eight rib. In mid-axillar, inferior border of the line is eight rib, inferior border of the cleft is ten. Posteriorly, near the vertebral column, inferior border of the line is ten, and the inferior border of the cleft is twelve. twelve. And if you raise your hand and put your hand posterior to your head, 
if you will be able to find the, the medial border of the scapula, this medial border is going to remember in the direction of the <coughs> oblique fissure. Okay? In surface anatomy, the medial border of the scapula during this position, when you raise your hand and put your hand posterior to the head, the medial border of the scapula is going to remember you the oblique tissue. Do you get that? Yes. Okay. And in this picture, we are going to look at the left line, right line. It is the arc of the aorta. And here is the pilon in the left side, pilon in the right side. What happened here? Yes. 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 You can see the difference. And about this, something happened here. More uh, likely. Bleeding? Bleeding? Bleeding. Bleeding. He's asking. Uh, this difference, it is going to show you that something happened here. It's in pneumonia. Huh? Pneumonia. Pneumonia. No, no, it is different. Okay, we have so many different problems and uh, cases about the lung. Pneumonia is one of them. Bronchite is one of them. Okay? Now here, you have some problem for the line here. Normally the line is such as this. Here, in the left side, you are going to look at the pillow. What happened to the right pillow? Uh, mass is here. It is possible when you are going to follow, you find that here is the cancelling mass. Okay. Tomorrow, please read tonight. And if you have any question, ask me. Please study tonight. I'm not going to ask you tomorrow. It's up to you. Because you know that you don't have enough time and very shortly you are going fast, you are going to find yourself in the exam. So please, please study by yourself. Listen to the Navi system. I upload all of this in the Navi system. And if you have any problem, if you have any question, welcome, welcome. Tomorrow you can ask me. We can go. Okay.